Hello everyone, welcome to Harshi class. I am Rani. Today we will study about NCRT class 6 science chapter 2 components of food. In this video we will study about the introduction of components of food. What do different food items contain? What do various nutrients do for our body? Balanced diet, deficiency diseases. Introduction here Punjab and Andhra Pradesh. We are going to talk about the food habits of two states. It may be vary from person to person according to their availability of the food items. For example, Punjab. The item of grain which they eat is makki roti, which is made up of corn. Rajma, also called kidney beans. Vegetables, mustard leaf curry and other milk products are here curd and ghee. Coming to the state Andhra Pradesh, rice, turdal and rasam, one vegetable, along with that buttermilk, ghee, pickle. So, our meals usually have at least one item made of some kind of grains. Along with that, other items could be a dal or vegetable curry or a meat product and also milk products. Those are curd, buttermilk, ghee and also some pickles. Sometimes we may not really have all this variety in our meals. It may not be possible for some of us to eat such a variety of items most of the time. Why meals usually consist of such a distribution? What do different food items contain? We know that each dish is usually made up of one or more ingredients. Here what are ingredients? Ingredients are the substances or the raw materials which we use to prepare a recipe. These ingredients we get from the plants and animals. The main sources of these ingredients are plants and animals. These ingredients contain some components that are needed by our body. Those are called nutrients. Let's see the definition of nutrients. The components of food which are needed by our body for growth and development are called nutrients. The major nutrients are carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins and minerals. Carbohydrates and fats gives us energy. Proteins helps in development of the body. Vitamins and minerals protect us from diseases. Carbohydrates, fats both gives us energy. In fact, fats gives double amount of energy compared to carbohydrates. Let's study in detail about these nutrients. What do different food items contain? We can test by using some simple methods. We know that food contains the nutrients along with the dietary fiber and water. So there are some simple methods we can test whether food contains the nutrients. For that we need some chemicals those are iodine, copper sulfate and caustic soda along with the test tubes and dropper. Okay, test for starch. Here, what is starch? Starch is a type of carbohydrate. There are many types of carbohydrates. The main carbohydrates found in our food are in the form of starch and sugars. The sources of starch are rice, wheat, tubers. Those are the main sources of starch coming to sugar sugar cane sources of sugars are sugar cane fruits honey etc how to test that whether the food contains starch or not for this first we need to take a small quantity of a food item or a raw ingredient then add 2 to 3 drops of dilute iodine solution on it. 
observe if there is any change in the color of the food item if there is change in its color if it gives bluish black color it indicates that it contains starch or else we can test by taking a potato potato also contains starch take a potato cut it into two pieces now put two to three drops of dilute iodine solution on it it will turns into blue black color it indicates that potato contains starch food plus iodine gives blue black color if there is no color change that means there is no carbohydrate in that food item next test for protein take a small quantity of a food item for testing in case the food is the food which we are going to test is in solid form then first we need to make a paste of it or powder it after that add around 10 drops of water to it and shake the test tube now add two drops of copper sulfate solution two drops of copper sulfate solution and 10 drops of solution of caustic soda to the test tube shake well and let the test tube stand for a few minutes a violet color indicates the presence of proteins in the food item a violet color indicates the presence of proteins in the food item what is the procedure here first take the food if the food is in solid form we need to grind it or convert it into powder form then add 10 drops of water around 10 drops of water to it after that add 2 drops of copper sulfate solution and 10 drops of caustic soda shake the test tube and let the test tube stand for a few minutes violet color indicates the presence of proteins in the food item test for fat take a small quantity of your food item wrap it in a piece of paper and crush it so a patch will appear on the paper sometimes the food items contains a little water because of that also it forms a patch like structure so let it dry for some time observe that if there is any oily patch after drying some time that indicates that the food item contains fat what do various nutrients do for our body in that first one carbohydrates the main function of carbohydrates is that they provide energy to our body carbohydrates gives immediate energy to our body that's why the laborer who do physical work they need more amount of carbohydrates compared to the persons who are sitting in the offices for example banker software employee okay and the sources sweet potato sugar cane wheat rice bajra melon mango potato maize etc you may observe that most of the sources of carbohydrates are plant products only those are these sources are also called as energy giving foods they contain carbohydrates they give energy to our body that's why these food items are also called energy giving foods next one fats fats also gives us energy in fact fats gives double amount of energy compared to carbohydrates fats helps body organs to grow and protects from injury the body uses fats as a fuel source for example if a person is doing fasting they are not going to eat anything for the entire day during that time our body uses the fat which is present in our body for producing energy that's why fat works as a fuel sources we get fats from the plant and animal products coming to the plant sources groundnuts coconut oil mustard oil nuts and til animal sources are meat fish eggs cream milk butter proteins 
the main function of proteins are proteins are needed for the growth and repair of our body proteins make our nails hair and muscles growing children should eat a protein rich diet because protein is the main component of your person's muscles skins bones organs and many other body parts protein helps to build muscles by repairing maintaining and replacing the tissues in the body proteins also helps in the proper development and working of the immunity system that's why growing children needs to take more amount of protein in their food compared to the adults and the main sources of proteins are gram moong turdal beans soya beans peas these all are the plant sources whereas the animal sources are meat eggs fish paneer these animal products contain more amount of protein vitamins vitamins help in protecting our body against diseases not only vitamins minerals also do the same that's why vitamins and minerals together called protective nutrients vitamins also help in keeping our eyes bones teeth and gums healthy in this vitamin a vitamin c vitamin d vitamin e and k along with that there is also a group of vitamins called vitamin b complex let's see in detail about those vitamins here vitamin a is rich in leafy green vegetables carrots papaya mango fish oil vitamin a keeps our skin and eyes healthy coming to vitamin b complex in that we will discuss about vitamin b1 b2 and b12 vitamin b1 is also called thiamine it is rich in sunflower seeds whole grain cereals sesame seeds brown rice the main function of vitamin b1 is it enables cells to turn carbohydrates into energy that means thiamine helps in converting the carbohydrate into energy another vitamin that is vitamin b2 which is also called riboflavin vitamin b2 is also called riboflavin and it is rich in almonds asparagus bananas the main function of vitamin b2 is that it maintains body growth and rbc next vitamin b12 vitamin b12 it is also called cyanocobalamin cyanocobalamin it is rich in mutton beef lobster etc cyanocobalamin helps in maintenance of central nervous system and rbc vitamin c vitamin c is rich in papaya oranges strawberries and guava in short we can say that all the citrus fruits what is the main function of vitamin c it promotes healthy gums and teeth it promotes healthy gums and teeth next vitamin d the main source of vitamin d is sunlight it is a natural source our body also prepares vitamin d in the presence of sunlight nowadays insufficient exposure to sunlight is causing vitamin d deficiency in many people other sources are mushrooms liver fish and eggs vitamin d is required for the healthy development of bones and teeth next vitamin that is vitamin e soya bean oil pine nuts olives and cooked spinach are rich in vitamin e vitamin e helps our body to use calcium for bones and teeth vitamin k vitamin k vitamin k is rich in spinach and broccoli it helps in clotting of blood vitamin k helps in clotting of blood minerals are needed by our body in small amounts but they are essential for proper growth of body and to maintain good health 
most food items usually have more than one nutrient minerals perform important functions like formation of bones teeth and blood cells and also helps in maintaining a normal heartbeat here we will discuss about calcium phosphorus iodine sodium and iron calcium it is rich in milk dairy products and eggs essential for healthy bones and teeth phosphorus phosphorus is rich in whole grains milk and banana phosphorus is also important for the maintenance of healthy bones and teeth iodine is rich in green leafy vegetables seafood iodized salt iodine helps in the formation of thyroid hormone sodium sodium is rich in table salt sodium helps keep control on blood pressure iron whole grains eggs leafy vegetables and meats are rich in iron iron is essential for hemoglobin formation in red blood cells dietary fiber dietary fiber also known as roughage roughage is mainly provided by plant products in our foods the main sources of roughage are whole grains pulses potatoes fresh fruits and vegetables the functions of roughage are it adds bulk to our food roughage helps in digestion and removal of waste it prevents constipation and also helps in bowel movements here roughage doesn't contain any nutrients but it helps in the absorption of nutrients roughage is not going to be digested by humans human beings doesn't contain the required enzyme which helps in the digestion of fiber whereas animals can digest the fiber water we know that around 70% of human body is made up of water only we get most of water that our body needs from the liquids we drink such as water milk and tea along with that we add water while cooking the food so what is the main role of water in our body like roughage water also doesn't contain any nutrients but it helps in the process of digestion not only in the process of digestion water acts as a medium in various chemical reactions that occur in the body digestion excretion circulation like that water helps in the excretion of body waste in the form of urine and sweat and also water maintains the body temperature it keeps our body hydrated it helps our body to absorb nutrients from food that's why water plays an important role in our body balanced diet a diet that contains all the nutrients in the right amount along with enough water and roughage is known as balanced diet eating the right kind of food is not enough it should also be cooked properly so that its nutrients are not lost few things we need to take care while cooking those are first thing the vegetables and fruits are washed after cutting or peeling them it will leads to the loss of some vitamins and also nowadays we are eating the fruits and vegetables after peeling them peeling of vegetables and fruits leads to loss of some vitamins and minerals and repeated washing of rice and pulses may remove some vitamins and minerals present in them along with that some people use more amount of water while cooking after that they used to throw the excess water because of that we lost the important nutrients and vitamins present in that food item along with that cooking improves the taste of food and makes it easier to digest but some vitamins are going to be destroyed by heat those are vitamin c vitamin c gets easily destroyed by heat during cooking process deficiency diseases a person may be getting enough food to eat but sometimes the food may not contain a particular nutrient if this continues over a long period of time the person may suffer from its deficiency here 
deficiency of protein and carbohydrates also causes some diseases most of the time these diseases are observed in children deficiency of protein causes kwashiorkor kwashiorkor symptoms of this disease are standard growth thinning of legs protruding belly sometimes both the protein and carbohydrate deficiency will occur we know that carbohydrates gives energy to our body and proteins helps in the growth and development of the body if these two nutrients are not going to be get by a child then it will leads to a condition called marasmus marasmus here the symptoms are complete or partial arrest of growth and lack of energy next vitamin a deficiency of vitamin a causes night blindness symptoms are poor or loss of vision in darkness sometimes complete loss of vision vitamin b1 deficiency causes beriberi its symptoms are weak muscles and very little energy to work vitamin c deficiency causes scurvy main symptoms are bleeding gums vitamin d deficiency causes rickets it makes the bones become soft and bent calcium calcium deficiency causes bone and tooth decay the symptoms are weak bones and tooth decay iodine deficiency of iodine cause goiter the main symptoms are the glands in the neck appear swollen mental disability in children will occur iron iron deficiency causes anemia the symptoms of anemia are weakness loss of appetite pale skin decrease in the production of rbc sodium sodium deficiency of sodium causes nausea and irritability nausea and irritability sodium is important in controlling the blood pressure and the sources of sodium are table salt so these are the deficiency diseases which are caused by the deficiency of different nutrients like comment and share please subscribe to my channel